Good morning, Merry Christmas! Yay! The big day's here! We made it. If it's not been done, it ain't being done. Ah, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you for taking time out of what I know is a really busy day to take some time to come to church and to remember the gift of Jesus. Really appreciate you coming, and I think we're going to be filming online, so those that are tuning in maybe a few days later, we pray that you're still feeling the festive joy. Let's start our time together by singing our first opening carol, The First Noel. <laughs> get to light all five candles this morning. Would any of the young people like to come out and light a candle? It's not often you get to, you know, we're under supervision. Alice, do you want to come out? Brilliant. Come on, I'm over here. <laughs> Yay. Come on up. Right, you're going to do it together. I'll bring it down. Alice, do you want to hold it and then we press that button? You press it. 
Number one for the first week. You gonna do number two? Number two. Right, number two is looking a bit sad because it's been really busy. Right, we might need to get a different one for that. Number three. There we go. We're on a roll now, aren't we? Do you want to see and help me? Number four. And last but not least, the big Christmas Day candle that we get to celebrate today. All five candles. Well done, Hamish. Thank you. Well done, Alice. Thank you so much. Our candles are lit. We remember that light shines in the darkness. Let's take a moment to pray. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the light of Jesus that shines in every pocket of this world. Thank you for that light that flickers, shining out love, Hope, peace, change. We pray as we gather here today, we would know your light shining all around us. We know that wax candles get blown out or get worn down. But we thank you that you don't, that you are always shining brightly around us. May we know that light in our hearts and in our homes on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I think, I mean, I didn't train, you know, get a degree to do this part of the service, but I don't know many ministers that wouldn't say this is their favourite part of ministry when they get to ask the children what they got for their Christmas. So, did anybody get any presents this morning? Okay. <laughs> Few. So, um, who was the earliest? Who was up? My guys were pretty good, half past eight. I know, well done. I'm not telling you what time they went to bed at, of course. Uh, but yes, anyone, was anyone up earlier than half past eight? Okay, oh, I think quite a few grown ups were earlier. Uh, uh, so, uh, you were earlier than half past eight? Were you earlier than that? What time were you? You, you, you're not worried you don't tell the time. Jenny, what time were you? Uh, well, then was two, two, three, six. Were you scared? Were you, you were on the hunt. What? 4 a.m. But then you went back. So you just, you just wanted to make sure there was stuff there at 4 a.m. And then you were able to go back, have a wee snooze, knowing that you were getting up to more presents. How brilliant. Right. Is, did anybody bring anything to show the church this morning? Did it, oh, JJ, what have we got here? Come on out. Oh, I know you don't need to. Am I allowed to see it? Who is this? Well, can I hold it up for everybody to see? <laughs> now, this feels pretty cuddly, to be honest. I could, I could use this later today. No, okay, no. So who is this? Sally. Is it Sally? Oh, from Monsters Inc. That is so, and what, this has a special name, does it? No. <laughs> Someone's been up since four o'clock. I don't want to see you later. Um, so do you, is that not a squish, squishable, squishmallow? Squishmallow, squishmallow, that's it. Christina, well, you might have something that's similar to that in your bag. What did you get? Oh, we've got little mini squishmallows. So we've got the big version and then the little version. And these are very sweet. This is just what the man needs. I don't want to put them near fire. Oh, and they're very sweet. And, and it came with a house, didn't it? So they, they have their very own home. Hope they, it's a mall. Uh, like a shopping centre. X. Oh, there you go. 
Glad Santa knows you better than I do. Uh, excellent. Anything else that anybody wants to show? What did you get? You got a cat eye mask. That sounds brilliant. Is that so you can have wonderful dreams about cats? Oh, brilliant. What a great gift. That sounds good. Ryan, what did you get? Oh, someone has got the power in the Purden house. Now, we had quite a lot going on this morning, and on my list, setting up a new television was not on it. Mom! The box said, sets up in 15 minutes. <laughs> Ryan, I, I didn't believe it. However, how long did it take us? Yeah, it's definitely more than, um, definitely more than 15 minutes. Yes, um, and now you've got a new telly. We'll all be watching telly in your room, which sounds quite exciting. <gasps> Hamish, what did you get? A musketeer sword. <gasps> that sounds so much fun. Okay, so mummy has a musketeer sword. We've got three musketeer swords in the family, you know. No, there's there are four of you in the family, so we're gonna have to get a new sword, but three musketeer swords. Daddy can vouch, it's quite painful. And <laughs> Daddy can vouch it's painful. There's already been battles in the household this morning. My goodness, a musketeer sword. How fabulous. Anything else? Any, anybody else get anything they want to tell us about? No, well, we have got some, I'm sure all of you got some really brilliant presents and you'll have lots of fun today playing with your presents or putting on your new, is anyone wearing something they got for Christmas? Oh, quite a few of you, very good. It's lovely having new things and you know, I was thinking and I was remembering um, when I was little and you would go into the living room and you'd see if Santa had been, and you'd go in, and there'd be something gigantic. It was always like this teddy that was like the biggest teddy I've ever seen, or a Barbie caravanette that was the biggest caravanette I'd ever seen, and everything always felt so big. And as I got older, the presents seemed to get a little bit smaller. They probably got more expensive, to be fair, but they seemed to be a little bit smaller. And sometimes we look back and we think everything felt a bit bigger when we were little. And I was thinking about how the gift of Jesus, instead of things getting a little bit smaller when you get older, the gift of Jesus gets bigger and bigger. The more you get to know how much God loves you, you realize the gift grows and grows and grows. It doesn't shrink at all. It is a precious gift that we can celebrate every single day. Now, did anybody get any Lego? We are not, oh, you did, you did. We're not big Lego fans um, in our house. We've got a lot of unmade kits in our house. Uh, you just got some Lego. What did you, what Lego set did you get? Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. I get that, that sounds super cool. I'm really pleased. Lego is great fun. And will you do it today? Or will you wait till later on in the holidays? See how you feel. See if you can stay awake. Well, we have got a clip that's going to show us the Christmas story through Lego. A long time ago, before Christmas began, God's people were waiting for God's special plan. And they'd wondered for years how this plan would unfurl till an angel appeared <gasps> to a young teenage girl. Though Mary was troubled, the angel proclaimed, you found favour with God, do not be afraid. You will conceive and give birth to a son, call his name Jesus, the King has now come. I am the Lord's servant, she said in belief, but when Joseph found out, he was filled up with grief. For Mary and Joseph had not yet got married, what would people think of this baby she carried? An angel of God came to him in a dream and helped Joseph see. It was not as it seemed. It was God's Holy Spirit that brought life within. This baby had come to save people from sin. So Joseph and Mary 
and baby-to-be set off to Bethlehem, as was decreed. But when they arrived, there was nowhere to stay, no more rooms to be found for this babe on the way. And then soon the time came she gave birth to a son. The long-promised king had now finally come. And they weren't in a palace, all cosy and warm, where the animals feed was where this king was born. And while crowds in the town were all still fast asleep, there were shepherds nearby, watching over their sheep. Until something disturbed the darkness of night, an angel appeared and the sky filled with light. The glory of God all around them displayed. The angel declared, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause you great joy. The Saviour is born as a baby, a boy. The shepherds saw angels sing glory and peace and they said to each other, now let's go and see. They hurried to find this great king of the Jews. Then in awe and amazement, they spread the good news. Now far in the east, men most clever and wise had seen a strange star that was starting to rise. They knew that a king was the cause of this star, so they set off to find him and followed it far, till it stopped at the place where the boy would be found, and in wonder and worship they humbly bowed down. They opened their treasures, and what did they bring? But frankincense, gold, and myrrh for a king. A king who was little, a king who could cry, who was fragile and feeble, and one day would die. The powerful king who'd been promised for years, who would share in our suffering and take up our tears. For though he was rich, God chose to be poor. He made himself nothing so we could be sure. But God is now with us. The King has come near. Good news for all people. Jesus is here. Next hymn that sings of that special story, Child in a Manger. I'm going to invite Christina to come out, my daughter. 
Come on, Len. And she's going to do our reading today, which is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. And, and there were shepherds living out there on the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, great joy that will be for the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour had been born to you and Messiah, Messiah, the Lord, to the Lord. This will, this will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloth in a manger, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with an angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven for, and on earth peace to those whom his favours rest. Thank you, Christina. We're going to sing our next hymn, which concentrates on the theme for this morning, and it's Angels from the Realm of Glory. about angels. You'll have seen in the nativity we had our little Lego angels that appeared. We hear of angels singing, we sing about them. But actually the Bible has loads and loads of verses about angels. It's not just at Christmas time that we think about angels. I thought I'd read just a few out for you. Psalm 91. 
He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Matthew 18. See that you don't despise these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father. Hebrews 13. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Psalm 34. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. These are just a tiny selection of verses in the Bible that talk about angels. There's loads of them. And if I'm being completely honest, some of them I don't really understand. Some of them are quite tricky to get my head around. Christmas feels like a time more than any other that we really celebrate the angelic. Angels, as we said, feature heavily in the nativity story. I wonder if you can think of any other ones. Christina read for us about the shepherds and angels appearing to the shepherds. Can you think of any other ones? The whole story is kicked off by an angel appearing to a young woman, Mary, with a really important message. They are absolutely scattered throughout the whole nativity. And a good nativity is not fulfilled unless it's got some angels. We had some particularly glamorous angels at our nativity last week. Christina was very gracious and didn't be an angel and was a less glamorous shepherd. Which, are you over it? Oh, phew, Ah, she's over it. Everybody wants to be the angel. They look so beautiful. I wonder if you've ever thought about the angels. I wonder if you've ever wondered what they looked like. The Lego didn't seem to quite capture that heavenly being, did it? I wonder if you've ever wondered what an angel sounds like. What kind of voice might they have? One thing we do know is when angels are mentioned in the Bible, there's a phrase that comes very quickly after they appear. Do not be afraid. I wonder if that's because they're a little bit frightening. It's something so unusual to get a visit from an angel. I recently watched an episode of My Life at Christmas with Sally Phillips. I think she's brilliant. And I watched the first episode, which was with Richard Cole, who used to be in the communards, who had an experience of God and is now a vicar. And he, he, she was interviewing him on his experiences at Christmas time. She asked him a question. Do you believe in angels? He quickly said, oh, yes, Absolutely. He then went on to talk about what the word angel means, and and it actually means very simply messenger, somebody who has a message. When Sally asked him what she thinks they look like, when she began to ask some of those questions I was asking, what do you think they're like? What do you think? How do you know when you've met one? And there's this verse about hospitality you might not even know. As she began to prod him and ask more questions, he says, do you know what? I don't know, which made me feel a little bit better too. She said, have you ever seen an angel? And he thought, and then he says, yes, actually, I think I have. With eagerness, she says, well, tell me the story. What happened? And he went on to tell a story of something that happened to a close friend of his back in the 80s. His friend's life was a mess, total chaos. He was making all the wrong choices. He ended up having far too much to drink, got in his car, drove, and then had a huge crash. He was absolutely rock bottom. He couldn't get any lower. The police saw there'd been a crash, came over to the incident. 
In a state of despair, as a policeman opened the door of the car, his, said, his friend said, I have to inform you, I'm actually HIV positive. The policeman looked at him and he says, well, I have to inform you, you are loved. Can you imagine? He was expecting judgment, and rightly so. He'd broken the law. He was expecting the policeman to absolutely go through him. And he said the words, you are loved. Who could imagine at your lowest point the transformation power of that statement? That is glad tidings. That's what we sing about. And so, what is the angel's message to us today? I can guarantee for each one of us gathered here, the angel is ready to bellow that you are loved. But I wonder if there's more glad tidings. I wonder if there's something deeper that maybe the Father would want us to know on this day of gifts. What might the Father want to give us as a gift? We rejoice with the angels. We sing the message of good news that they sang on that first Christmas. And they sing over us a song of love. Our next two hymns that will be in our service today are focused on love. In the midst of all the wrapping paper, fighting over the remote control, who's going to watch what on the telly, the Christmas dinner, if you're lucky, the naps on the sofa, I don't see, I could borrow your cat eye mask for that. I hope in the midst of all the activity, I hope you know how loved you are by the Father. Let's sing of that love together as we sing our next hymn, Such Love. A really important part of our worship here in Bonnyrigg Parish Church is the time that we spend praying for others. We know that we live in a world where we could do with some angelic visits. 
And to lead us into our prayers, I would like to show you a video. This is by an artist called Foya Vance. We had our Christmas choir this year, which was brilliant, and they sang one of Foya Vance's songs called Guiding Light. This song was nearly chosen, but wasn't, so it's great to play it today. And it's the story of an angel. Let's watch it together. Yeah. There's a man in the corner and his clothes are warm And he's holding out his hand You can see in his eyes as the people walk by No they don't understand You see they just think he's gonna take that more Go and spend it on dope. Then a man stopped by and I saw a smile inside As he gently whispered hope well, The trump started to cry, just kept saying Why, 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 can't you see I'm a darling? I'm 32 and I've got this one pair of shoes and a bad taste in my mouth I think it's clear to see that even God don't love me or us why would he leave me this way but then Gabriel just smiled and said be peace my child Salvation is here today He got up to his feet and he sang Hallelujah People were turning around in the street He looked them in the eyes and he sang Hallelujah There's someone here you gotta meet Like a bone turned round with a sun Gabriel just smiled and disappeared And when he looked to the crowd They were laughing out loud But he could not see them for tears When his vision came round There was a young girl on the ground And he knew she was fine at heart no, she never was a fighter until he lay beside her and gently whispered hope. They got up to their feet and they sang hallelujah. People in the street, they were turning around. They looked them in the eyes and they sang hallelujah. There's someone here that we have fun this sign Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah Every knee will bow and every tongue confess I'm the voice of one crying In the wilderness crying Let's pray. Father, we know that many need to hear that whisper of hope. And today, on this day of celebration, we remember those who are sad. We remember those who are frightened. We remember those who are lonely. And we pray for your angels to bring that message of hope. Today on this day of celebration, 
we remember areas of conflict in our world. We pray that your angels would come and bring a message of peace. Today, in a day of celebration, we remember those who are feeling loss. We pray for all who have lost a loved one in this past year, for whom this Christmas will be very difficult. We pray for your angel to come and to whisper your love. Today, in a day of celebration, we remember those who are sick and in hospital. We pray that your angels would visit with healing. Today, on a day of celebration, we remember the gift of Jesus, the gift of love. Would we be messengers of that great love to all those around us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's finish our time together by singing Love Came Down at Christmas. And the knowledge of the love of God filling our hearts and filling our homes and filling this community. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.